Pride affects our sleep. Um, anxiety is actually a result of anxiousness, not trusting in God and, and not trusting that God can take care of things and feeling like it's all up to us, like somehow we're in control. Uh, Jesus said, who of you by uh, being anxious or worried can add a single hour to your life? Like anxiousness, worry, all of it is connected to this. Um, I, I feel like I got to control this. And if I can't control it, then I'm worried because I don't trust God. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar was plagued with sleeplessness and he has this nightmare. And in the nightmare, there's this huge tree that grows bigger than any other tree. And every nation can see this tree and it topples above this, the clouds in the sky. But in the dream, the tree gets chopped at the stump. It falls to the ground. And in the dream, he hears these words, seven years in, in the jungle, seven years in the forest, seven years as a beast. And then the stump will grow again. He doesn't know what to do with the dream. He doesn't know what to do with the voice that he heard in the dream. So he goes to Daniel, the prophet during that time. Daniel was an Israelite living in captivity. He was one of the Hebrew boys like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, who were really captured as slaves from Israel to serve in Babylon and they served as wise men, dream interpreters. And they would study and they would try to understand how to interpret dreams of other people. The king would often call on them. So the king comes to Daniel. He says, what does my dream mean? And Daniel says this. He says, this is the interpretation of verse 24. This is the interpretation. First, he says, you are the tree. And the tree is coming down. Pride comes before a fall. He says, your majesty, this decree that the most high from heaven has issued against you is that you will be driven from people and you will live with the wild animals. He says, you're about to lose your glory. You're going to go from being the highest of high. No, very few people could relate to Nebuchadnezzar. Like he was the top of the top of the top. And he had more money than anyone, had more power than anyone. But anything you don't turn into praise turns into pride. Anything you don't turn into praise turns into pride. And so Nebuchadnezzar had become prideful in his own eyes. He was too big for his own britches. He had forgotten where all the wealth came from. He had forgotten where all the power came from. He forgot the God who delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar had had a season where he actually was worshiping God, but then he drifted back into a place of pride. And just like we saw even in, in the story of Lucifer, who was one of the most uh, powerful, beautiful angels in heaven, his pride is what led to his downfall and he was cast out of heaven and, and became the serpent on the earth, became the devil, the accuser of brothers and sisters. Pride always leads to a fall. Pride always leads to destruction. But Daniel says this, he says, you will be driven as a beast. I was telling this story to my kids last night and they were so intrigued. They were like, wait, what? They were like, a man became a beast? They were like, this sounds like a Disney movie, like Emperor's New Groove. I was like, yeah, Disney plagiarized the Bible. They were like, didn't, didn't that guy, he turned into a llama, he was a beast for a season? I was like, yeah. And they were like, and Beauty and the Beast? I was like, yes, it's just like that. Except for in this place, this king had refused to give God glory and he was full of pride. And Daniel says, you will be drenched with the dew from heaven. Seven years will go by that you are in this humbled state. You're gonna go through, everybody say seven. Seven is an important number. There's a connection to this number that we're gonna get into later in the message, but he says, God will leave a stump. And that stump is the hope that you will repent. And when you repent, when you praise, your only path out of this humbling state, your only path out of this poverty, your only path out of this problem, your only path is gonna come through praise and worship. When you begin to praise, when you stop thinking so high of yourself, when you stop focusing so much on yourself, your kingdom will be restored. When you begin to give God the glory, when you begin to worship God, can I tell you, worship restores honor in your life. Praise to God restores value in your life. This is why the devil hates praise and worship. This is why the devil himself was a musician. He was, the, he was the worship leader in heaven. And so he attacks our ability to praise. He attacks our ability to sing, right? He wants us singing songs about ourselves. He wants us focusing on ourselves. He doesn't want us giving God worship and glory. Why? But God inhabits the praises of his people. And oftentimes in the Bible, God used worship to break chains. Like when Paul and Silas were trapped in a prison, he didn't give them a key 
The key was in their mouth. When they begin to praise, when they begin to sing, the chains fell off, the shackles fell off. The devil knows that there is power in praise and worship. Go ahead and take a minute to praise and worship God. Some of y'all are about to get restored through praise and worship. You're about to see reconciliation through your praise. Daniel says, when you begin to praise, the stump is gonna grow again. The tree that was chopped down will grow again. That means your life will begin to come back to you. And Daniel says this, your kingdom will be restored when you acknowledge that God is the king of all kings, that he is the ruler of heaven. And then he says, majesty, please accept my advice. Accept my advice. He says, really, this is a question I think we should ask ourselves, am I a teachable person? Ask the person next to you, are you teachable? Are you teachable? When we hear this message and we think about pride and we go, yeah, 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 this is a good message for some prideful, arrogant people I know in my life. My boss needs this sermon. My ex needs to listen to this sermon. They could never be told no. They always had to have, to have a yes people around. Right, right. But pride is easy to spot in presidents. Pride is easy to spot in bosses. Pride is easy to spot in celebrities. Pride is easy to spot in athletes. Pride is hard to spot when you're looking in the mirror because you don't see it. You don't see what's in you. And Daniel said, take my advice. If you're teachable, if you're teachable, God can work with you. But if you can't be told no, if you want it all your way, if you're always right and everyone else is always wrong, this pride is going to be like a cancer that eats you from the inside out. And the only cure to the curse is praise and worship. The only cure to the curse that's about to hit your life is through praise and worship. He says, renounce your sins. Start doing what is right. Give to the poor. By the way, generosity is connected to praise and worship. You can't have one without the other. They're all connected. A, a person who praises and worships God lives with a generous soul. A person who refuses to praise and worship lives with greedy hands, right? Closed hands. This is my money, my stuff. I earned this. I got this. I'm in control of this. So stinginess is connected to a lack of praise and worship. But generosity is connected to praise and worship. Daniel says, if you'll renounce your sins, if you'll give God the glory, if you'll help the poor, if you'll live with eyes on God, he will restore your prosperity and it will be bigger and better than it was before you begin to praise. The good news is this story ends good, but not yet. All this happened in verse 28 to Nebuchadnezzar. Everything that was interpreted through that dream, but it didn't happen right away. God has a due date for the consequences of our sin. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean you got away with it. So God's giving him time to repent. God's giving him time to make things right in his life, and yet he refuses. And 12 months goes by. This should, this should send a, a chill down our spines. 12 months goes by, and Nebuchadnezzar thinks, yeah, that dream that Daniel prophesied about me, that's not coming true. And he's standing on the roof of his royal palace, and he looks at his Escalade, and he looks at his nice house, and he looks at his children, and he looks at his wardrobe of nice suits and ties and shoes, and he looks at his job, and he looks at all the people, and he says, I am great. Verse 30, he says, is this not the great life that I have made? Is this not the great empire Babylon that I have built? This is my royal residence. My mighty power did this. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. I'm an independent. I did it all by myself. The second you stop giving glory to God, you're walking down the path towards destruction. You want to get back on the path of life? Start giving praise to God for every good thing that's happened. Where would we be without the mercy of God? Where would we be without the goodness of God? But when he started taking glory for himself, as the words in verse 31, as the words were leaving his lips, the Lord spoke from heaven. He heard a voice. This is what is decreed for you, 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 you. You will be driven away, away from people. You will live as a wild animal, a beast, 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 beast. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven years will pass by until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign, 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 sovereign. Over all the kingdoms, 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 kingdoms. on earth it gives 
those to anyone he wishes, 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 right? I have to use all kinds of voices because I've got five kids, so I've got to tell them all stories with all kinds of characters and stuff. Immediately as the voice spoke, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people, and he became a beast. It says his body was drenched with the dew of heaven. His hair grew with the feathers of an eagle. You think your husband has back hair? This man had eagle hair all over his body. We all got a little bit of back hair, all right. Okay, don't act like, all right, let's move on from back hair, okay? This man had eagle hair everywhere, crazy looking. And he had claws. You think your wife has long nails? This man had claws like a bird. And he would walk around for seven years. Just imagine this. The most pow- like imagine whoever in your mind right now is the most powerful person on the planet. Back then, it was Nebuchadnezzar. During Caesar's time, it was Caesar. During Alexander the Great's time, it was Alexander. Right now, it could be a president here in the United States. It could be some, some high leader. But imagine if that leader all of a sudden became a beast, and you were just walking through the woods of Oklahoma, and this guy's just out there, just eating grass. And you're like, what's going on over here? This guy was like a billionaire. What happened to his estate? What happened to his money? What happened to his wealth? Pride turns you into a beast. You can look handsome on the outside, but your heart is ugly on the inside. You can look gorgeous on the outside, but an ugly spirit eventually begins to show. When you don't know how to be kind to people, when you don't know how to be wrong, when you don't know how to apologize, when everybody's got to be perfect, when you're critiquing every little thing and I'm leaving a review about every little person and place I go to because I'm, I'm a perfectionist. You go, well, that's not pride, Paul. That's just perfectionism. It's connected to pride. All throughout the Bible, we see these attributes that God looks at. He says, if you don't crush pride, pride will crush you. If you don't deal with the beast of pride, pride will turn you into a beast. So there he is. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us and that we would leave today with a greater humility and a praise and a heart of worship towards you. In Jesus' name, everybody said.